Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are here again with another episode of On today's episode, we are actually out here in Plano, Texas to check out a very sweet resto mod Ford F100. Now you might be asking, why are we out here in Plano, Texas if we're trying to showcase cars from our community? Well, as it turns out, this truck right here behind me has some deep roots back in Tulsa, and we're gonna talk about them. Check it out. All right, everybody. So we're gonna talk about this 1941 Ford F100 resto mod truck that's back here. Now, I had mentioned at the beginning, we are out in Plano, Texas. And yes, this is originally a vehicle that was part of the Tulsa car community. This truck has been family owned by the Meek family from Tulsa since 1941 when it was originally built. And it was actually used at their furniture store. You might've heard about it in North Tulsa, Meek Furniture since 1941 when it was bought. We're talking, this was a working, hauling furniture delivery truck back here in its good old days. So the reason the truck's out here in Plano is because they're keeping ownership of the truck in the family and the current relatives live out here in Plano. But they were nice enough to let us come out, check it out and film the car and see what it was all about. Obviously, the car did not look this way back in 1941 when it was originally purchased. It didn't even look this way back in 1984 when they were still using it to deliver furniture. We actually found a really cool article from the Tulsa World from 1981, and it's featured in a nice huge image on the front page. So, you know, they were well-established members of our Tulsa community, which is pretty awesome. And these were some of the original hot rodders out in Tulsa, the Meek family. Now, obviously a truck this old getting used for deliveries for that long is gonna get pretty beaten up and probably replaced with more current technology after a while. So the Meek family decided in 2007 that they were gonna restore the truck but rather than just doing plain old classic restoration, they went the resto mod route. So clearly it no longer is holding the stock motor, stock transmission. I don't even think we have the stock chassis anymore. We're not just talking about putting a big powerful motor in here. We're talking about top to bottom, rebuilt, door panels, fenders, hood, chrome, grill, everything was meticulously restored from images and parts that they had remaining from the original purchase. Additionally, the entire chassis has been rebuilt. They have a custom TRS chassis on here, running the suspension with coilovers. Clearly not something they were using in 1941, <laughs> but it definitely rides a lot better due to that. So, Obviously, when you're gonna be riding low with coilovers on a brand spanking new chassis, you gotta put some new shoes on her. And currently, they're running American racing wheels on it. Pretty nifty feature on the center cap too, you might notice it's the Shelby emblem. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more here in a second when we get to the motor. Now on these American racing wheels, they have them wrapped with some Nitto NT555s. Definitely some nice tires to stick to the ground when running this thing down the street. When you're doing a restoration like this, paint color is very important. And they actually utilized the original paint color called Cayuga Blue on this thing. And it looks fantastic. And in addition to that, you can even see going all along the hood and the door panels all the way back to the rear of the cab, there's hand-painted pinstriping. Like, that's serious. That's some seriously awesome work right there. And it looks awesome, flawless. Now, if we hop over to the interior, pop this door open, it has been completely reupholstered 
All the doors have been redone. And then yet again, we get that little nice touch of the Shelby Cobra emblem on the doors. This thing's rocking an all aluminum steering column, which just sets off the inside, matching up with all the chrome and the awesome steering wheel wrapped in the matching leather. You got fully restored gauges from the original plus a little summit racing rpm gauge so you know you can have that little bit in there too ac works full sound system in this thing even hiding a little fire extinguisher back here just in case because you know you never know um transmission automatic looks like it's a stick shift but it has been redone with an automatic transmission some pretty interesting buttons in there too for the starting sequence, at least interesting to me because I wasn't familiar, but we'll talk about that when we go take it for a spin here in a minute. Let's jump on over to this motor and take a look at what awesome things they have going on under there with this resto mod. Hood's a little on the hot side, so we gotta be careful opening it. <laughs> Inside this Resto Mod Ford F100, the beating heart is this amazing looking Ford 305 Cobra motor. And this isn't just something that was pulled out of another vehicle and slapped in here. We're, call we're talking complete rebuild. I mean, take a look at the pulleys on this thing. Got all the chrome matching pulleys. That's some, that's some fancy schmancy stuff right there. Got MSD ignition, big mouth air intake, 70 millimeter throttle body, everything from the crank to the camshaft to the heads, everything has been replaced, redone, reworked. I mean, it's, it's a beast. And if you look, you can see down there, we got some nice headers attached, dumping out to the back in this pretty awesome looking dual exhaust right under the bumper. And let me tell you, this thing sounds fantastic. You wanna start it up? Let's get her started. Let's hear what 1941 should sound like. So we've looked at it. We've talked a little bit about the history of this sweet looking vehicle right here. I think it's time to uh, take it for a spin. What do you think? You ready for a ride? This is my dad, by the way, so he's not going to say anything. <laughs> All right. Mr. Cooper, Mr. Mr. Earl Cooper over here. Senior. Senior. <laughs> All right, let's take this thing out for a ripper. So you might have heard me talking. Yes, I am in here with Mr. Earl Cooper Sr., current uh, caretaker for this vehicle. Uh, I had mentioned there is an interesting startup sequence for this. Now, I am not familiar with these cars, so this is kind of new to me. Got kind of that race car feel, if you ask me, but I also don't know what I'm talking about. You'll notice Jason is also not here, which doesn't help since I'm Turn, car term illiterate apparently, but um, well, can you go ahead, Mr. Earl Cooper Sr., and show us what the starting sequence is here? Sure. Well, Junior, <coughs> this. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> sorry. All right. Go ahead. Just, you're you're right. good. Uh, you'll notice on the dash, there's this white knob. The spot is marked throttle, but that's, and I'm sure that must be historical. But all I do is pull that out, which turns some power on for me, and start her up. And here we go. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, and you'll notice too, like the pedals are itty bitty. That's a pretty itty bitty gas pedal. And the, the brakes are all mechanical. These are not hydraulic brakes. So you really got to push that circular pedal pretty good. And then what's that little button up there in the top left? High beams, low beams. That's that's right there. That's your high beams, low beams. That's pretty awesome. All right. Well, I'm pretty hot. We need to get some airflow going in this right. thing. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. So, camera's shaking a bit. Hopefully it's not too bad. I guess these coilovers are a little bit on the stiff side. Uh, but it's a 305, totally rebuilt. Um, automatic transmission that's essentially a stock transmission um, so it's a little bit a little bit dog off the line as uh, old man Earl here was telling me uh, it doesn't really get up and go until you're in like what like third gear yeah yeah so first and second a little slow once you get going though you really feel it once we hit third gear here we go. Here we go. Hold on. Oh, a little pop out of there. Chirping the tires a bit. Not bad. right now <laughs> so it wasn't Earl seniors fault what had happened but there was a little bit of an issue at one point while this vehicle was being stored with the um, uh, linkage on the transmission so at a certain point if you went too far into park it put it back in drive or, or something like that right yeah That's like my understanding like it supposedly appearing position and where you put it appeared in park, but it somehow engaged drive. Now, Earl Cedar here thought from the appearances and where the handle was and the fact that he parked it there, that it was in park. But when he went to turn the key, thing lurched like a foot and a half right in to the storage garage. <laughs> So, uh, not one of uh, Earl Sr.'s happier moments. And it took several months to get it fixed because as you saw on the car, pretty much everything in the front is chrome. And getting chrome work done right now is super difficult. Uh, hard to find anybody doing it. It took months to get uh, anyone who even said they could do it. And then they finally got it and you know had to go through all that process. But it's back. Looking more beautiful than ever. And the hood's even more functional now. They put new hood struts in for them too. The old ones, you had to hold the darn thing up. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey now. There we go. Yeah, right there. It's like it's ready to get on. 
on it and then it shifts gears and you're like, boom. It's okay though. We probably shouldn't be trying to drag race this puppy anyway. <laughs> What's up? Oh, oh, give him a give I him, see a tack there. Oh, give him a little bit of the juice. Oh no, really give it to him. No, uh, I don't feel that comfortable. <laughs> and, and that, that, Lexus, oh. that Lexus is too close to me. I'm, I'm still having recovery from the storage. <laughs> there you go. I love the uh, subwoofer position in this thing too. There's a subwoofer right here in the center console. Pretty awesome uh, mounting on the interior, right right below the uh, fire extinguisher, which hasn't had to been used yet, right? We haven't had any fires yet. Uh, no fires, and I hope we never have any because I don't know if that thing works at this point. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, maybe it's time to uh, to pop a new one in there, get it checked out, checked or something. You know, just if you're gonna be driving around in the heat or something. Now, you guys are still taking this out to like car shows and stuff here in town, right? Well, we had been, but then uh, 2020 happened, as well as the uh, storage accident, so that's kind of slowed things down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh about the storage accident. It's funny now that it's over and done with and, and I can joke about you crashing a, you know, resto mod in a garage. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I know, Junior, you've never done it, been in any of those types of situations in your life. Are we, okay, so I feel like this is a throwback to the time I accidentally drove a car into the garage wall and destroyed a bunch of uh, drywall. Is that correct? Well, that's at least one of them. That's at least one of them. <laughs> All right, so we are back. Gotta say, cruising around in this thing is pretty sweet people waving at you all over the place. The thing is so beautiful. Just everybody wants to look at it. Everyone wants to take pictures of it. And it's fun getting to actually talk to some people about the story regarding the car, uh, where it came from, how long it's been around, how long it's been in the same family since 1941. That's all we have for today on this episode of Sick Rides. Stay tuned for the next episode coming up, hopefully pretty soon. I know we, had a little bit of a lag between these episodes, but we're picking it back up. Things are getting moving. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so you can keep up with not only all our shenanigans and these cool cars we're checking out, but you can also see the progress we're making on the Batmobile getting ready for Rocky Mountain Race Week. Stay tuned, guys. We'll catch you later. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't wanna let you.